Welcome to E360 TV, the live streaming and on-demand destination for influential voices and enlightened audiences. We offer trending, grassroots, and purpose-driven content across a diverse range of interests. E360 TV is more than just watching programs. We offer the ability to interact with live shows connecting audiences to real, authentic influencers and storytellers while streaming to millions of devices. Real experiences. Raw conversations. One destination for it all. E360 TV. Till it comes on the other monitor. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. There, I'm clear again. How's everybody doing? Welcome to today's installment of Bathroom Moments. I'm your host, Lauren Michaels Harris, and I'm so, so excited about what we've got in store for you today. Um, before we get going on that, uh, welcome to the ninth day, you guys. It's the ninth day of December. It is flying by. Put in the comments how far along the path of Christmas shopping are you? 10%, 10%, 20%, like me, uh, 0%, right? Um, I'm one of those last minute guys back in the day when I used to actually go out to the stores because I don't play like that anymore. Uh, I don't have time. I'm not afraid of COVID or anything. Uh, just It's just easier online for me. But I used to get in the store Christmas Eve, seriously, and get all of my shopping done, even if it was everybody's gifts had to come from Walgreens. Sometimes that was all once it was open. <laughs> <laughs> when I remember, wait, tomorrow's Christmas? Oh, shit, right? Walgreens. Mm -hmm. You know, remember those big things of um of uh, bubble bath that look like champagne bottles you could give to your school teacher? <laughs> Everybody got one. Yes, they did. But it's the thought behind it, right? So listen, you guys, today uh, we're going to talk about a lot of things before we get started. Welcome. Come on in. Come on in. You know there's room for all. Share this out. Share this out. I wanted to do this today, um, and I'm going to plant that and then uh, take care of a little housekeeping business. Um, but I wanted to do this today because, you know, it's it's, it's um, a very interesting time in the world, to say the least. And uh, a lot of people are fearful. I'm just going to put it out there. We're going to talk about that. A lot of people are fearful 
um, because, you know, they're being groomed. Uh, uh, there's all kinds of conspiracy theories. Uh, there's all kinds of crap going on between families because you're vaccinated. I'm not whatever. Uh, so we're going to talk about some ways today that people uh, that are on the quest, if you will, uh, for enlightenment, uh, searching for those stairways, that staircase of ascension, uh, all those things to make great, greater, bright, brighter, strong, stronger, bold, bolder, right? So today we're going to talk about finding that E and that R that helps take everything you already have to a whole new level. So I've brought three people in today, three uh, intuitive guys, if you will, who have each uh, found their own way to get to where they need to be for now. And then they uh, found their way to the, the road to what they are seeking to become. So I wanted them to share some of the things that they know to be true. And I'm going to do the same. And I this is for you, too. So get your comments, questions, and uh, enlightened everything together. And we're going to get in there. Uh, so let me see who's here. Jamie. Hi, Jamie. How are you? Sherry McLean. Top of the morning. Abu, how are you? Uh, and everybody else, Tia Rogers, I'm not going to take up too much time, but I'll acknowledge you guys before it's said and done. You best believe that is the Bella Purpose. It is not just a clever gimmick. It's not a show prop. It's an opportunity. It's a reminder that just like that bell, when I hit it, it has a ring to it. Well, so does the truth. And when you hear the bell ring, you might be doing a hundred other things, but I want you to commit to stopping just for that moment, back in that vehicle up known as your spirit. And throwing what's on this, what's in the atmosphere that we're doing here in the car with you, take it with you, okay? Because uh, I just don't want you to miss it. I know how uh, the, those other outside forces, the, you know, back here, oh, anything, anything to get us to miss that moment that can change our lives and the lives of others. Can I get an amen? Help me at this point. Welcome to the show as we do every morning. Met her this weekend, this past weekend out in Hollywood for the cover shoot of Heart of Hollywood magazine, which I'll grab. Lucy McGillicuddy Ricardo in the house, you guys. She's my sidekick. You know who she is. She's my version of Ed McMahon. Mm. And today, we're sipping on some uh, toasted Georgia pecan coffee. Somebody here from Atlanta. I'm going to see if that's a real thing. So anyway, I'm looking for it. My desk and uh, everything around it is just, I don't know what you'd call it, messy. That'll work. So, uh, But it's an organized mess. Am I the only one who claims that? You know what I'm talking about. So anyway, listen, I want to say I can't say enough about uh, the treatment this past weekend that I received while uh, uh, and thank all of you for your support over the last six months or so uh, with that international contest through the uh, Heart of Hollywood magazine. You guys know that they put bathroom moments on the back of that magazine for the next two years. And then I was like, oh. I wonder what it'd be like to be on the front and back at the same time. And then we found out, my team found out, well, you'll be the first person. So that's what I went for. We raised $10,535 for charity. Each dollar was a vote. And I thank all of you for all of your support through that. Here we are. That was the rat party out at the cover shoot. Wonderful people. It was like something I could have never imagined. There I am in a fake bathtub. And they're out there on the when we first pulled out to the Walk of Fame in Hollywood. It was a great day uh, in the neighborhood. And I want to just share something with you guys. Uh, man, they tricked me. Yes, they did. They tricked me, but good. We uh, had a wonderful lunch. I got about a minute here. Uh, we had a wonderful lunch at the incredible Beverly Hills Hotel. And if you've never been there, get there. You guys see, I posted that bungalow that the rock had just gotten out of a day before I was in there. And that thing was, would you, are you ready for, I didn't stay there. Don't get it twisted. No, I would never. $30,000 a night. Right? I, you, ooh, I wish somebody would just give me $30,000 that they did not want or need. Um, it ain't going to take me a night to figure out what to do with it. It is not. But yeah, people pay it. So anyway, they told me, oh, we were walking through and there, see that picture right there? I'm going to blow it up. They said, oh, Lauren, get over there and um take a picture because they were doing a bunch of B-roll, right? Okay, wait a minute. I'm trying to get out of the way. Something's scrolling on the bottom. I can't see what I need. Um, What is that thing rolling all the, there? A bunch of code or something. Russians be gone. Or who a hacker, whoever that is, get out of there. Okay, watch. Listen to this. They got me good. Can you hear that? I don't hear it. Oh, wait. I know. You know, I can't wait till I get a contract with NBC. I'm tired of this. Click it. Here you go. Okay, watch. Arnudine. 
Someone's talking on there. Room service. Our Room service. service. I was going to pretend like Someone's I was uh, uh, on there. You know, talking to Dean Martin for the photo because I can't. I can't do all that when they're like, "Now do this, Lauren." Acting ain't easy. Oh my God. And you know, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna pretend like I'm calling Dean Martin in his room back in the day. And a woman goes, well, hello, how can I help you? Scared the bejesus out of me. You saw what I did, right? But it was a lot of fun. Hats off. Um, thank you so much, Heart of Hollywood Motion Pictures and Heart of Hollywood Magazine. Uh, um, thank you, thank you. And thank all of you, there we go. So here we go, let's get started. Uh, it's a 90 minute episode today. I've never done that. I've had 90 minute television specials in the afternoon and night, totally separate from bathrobe moments where I'm usually just the moderator. But today is a little bit different because it's that important. It's that important. And here on bathrobe moments, you guys know that we have illuminated conversations every day. That's right. Monday through Friday, um, uh, every day at 8 a.m. Shameless plug in three, two, one. Oh, I already did it. Uh, but we do. And this one's, this, this one's extra special. So if you have any questions, we're going to talk about all things woo-woo, why people call it that. I think that's because they're scared to let it out. We're going to talk about all that, the stigma, the fears, um, what's what. Okay? So listen, and two of these guys have been here before. One is a first-timer, so you know he'll probably be shaking and quivering. Y'all be nice. Now I'm just playing. He's a pro. I see him shaking your head. Okay, Ez. I was just playing. Dang. No, no, I ain't scared. Okay. Okay. All right, you guys. Put some hearts on the screen. Share this out. Get blessed. Be blessed in the manner in which you bless other people. Don't keep all this to yourself. Send it out and change somebody's life. Here they come. Mm-hmm. Okay. What's up? Welcome. <laughs> Aloha. Uh, hello, hello. Huh. Howdy. Okay. So I already see Ez and Lane. Um, they like they cl- they fashion. Um, <laughs> Jesse clearly don't give a shit. I'm just playing. I'm just, <laughs> I, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. you're like, hey, just give me a t-shirt and I'm good. Um, uh, welcome, gentlemen. How you doing today? I'm rock and amazing. rolling. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was almost like a little choir. Everybody yeah. almost did the same thing. Why don't we start with Amazing. Lane Balone? Lane Balone. Uh, did you ever get called Lane Baloney? Yeah, when I was younger. I know. Well. Yeah. <laughs> well, that yeah, was yesterday. Well, you were younger yesterday. Yeah. Well, when I was way, 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 way younger. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Because I <laughs> well, actually there was a point where I, I, I was called that until it's, it stopped bothering me, and then no one ever called it me again. Right, because it wasn't yeah. fun. It ain't fun. Yeah, it was like, yeah. Oh, it doesn't rub them the wrong way anymore. Right. Yeah. Right. So, Lane, you tell me that you're in Colorado Springs, Colorado today, headed off to the Atlanta area tomorrow uh, to be with Jesse T. I think it's his birthday or something you said. So uh, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. What brings you here? Yeah, Um, I'm I'm ready to have a beautiful conversation today. I I know all three of you on different levels and in different ways. And I know that today we're going to extract some playful authenticity and share a really powerful beautiful message for the world and uh, we live in an interesting time so Mm. i think all of our lives and our experience are gonna be able to contribute to something beautiful today awesome thank you i agree i agree (laughs) let's go to ez ez tell everybody what your name really sounds like and then explain about this ben in the middle ernst because ben i know i read a i read a book where the guy was like some kind of guru and his mm. name was something Ben something. Okay. So I think there's something behind that Ben. Go ahead, put it up. Absolutely, absolutely. So the name's Ezria Ben Ernst. I was born Ezria Derek Ernst Albert. And Ernst is my father's name. So Ez, Ezria is a Hebrew name. And uh-huh. Ben connotates son. So it's, it's to honor my father. So Ezria Ben Ernst, son okay. of Ernst. Yeah. Oh, so are you Hebrew? I was practicing. I'm. I'm just a being at this point. Yeah. You're just a being. Okay. You were practicing. Yeah. Okay. We were all practicing. Okay. And you are <laughs> actually today uh, in uh, Tulum, Mexico. Correct. Absolutely. Is that where you live? Are you on vacation or something? I live a vacation here at this point. So this, <laughs> is, this is this is home for me. I went and closed a bunch of circuits between Hawaii and California, and the states, and so this is now home. Happy oh, to say. Hawaii and California. Yeah. Mm, spoiled much? You could say. You could say. <laughs> why, did you, why not? 
North Dakota or someplace. That's, that was next on my list, but I just happened to end up in Tulum, and so I figured I'll wait. Next life <laughs> for, <laughs> for North Dakota. Nice, uh, yeah. right. Who doesn't? Two okay. calls is calling, I know. <laughs> right. Listen, we're really happy you're here. Thank you for joining us. And Thank last you. but not least, Jesse T. And it was when you were here last, Jesse, we were in the green room after the show, and we, we came to the uh, realization that, that was the conversation was still uh, being beckoned. So I asked you if you could put together this group we have here, and you did. So say hello to everybody, and we know that you are in Atlanta, um, Georgia. Um, so tell us a little bit about what, what you hope for today. I just hope to to show up in love and in truth, have a little bit of fun, play a little bit, be of service, and connect with my brothers on a deeper level. That's awesome. That's awesome. So everybody, we're going to get started. I'm going to ask you one more time, a uh, call to action at this point, simply be because, because I already know when I was uh, um, beginning my quest, wait, not beginning it, when I was consciously beginning it, because mm. I was beginning it when it began, but consciously doing those things, moving those, you know, playing the shell game, if you will, with what is greater than, uh, there, was, there were all kinds of things in all directions from top to bottom, bottom to top. Side to side, side to side, corner to corner, and corner to corner. Some of them were meant for me, some were not. And then there was all those things that fell in between. So there is a real thing called as a quest. But, you know, most people, a lot of people, most of us at one point or another have been fearful of looking around corners, peeking under the bed, walking through that tunnel. Um, so I wanted to just talk about the things that people fear most. So I pulled up something really quickly. Um, I knew this. It's in my uh, opener for my coaching program. The number one fear uh, in most people is public speaking, right? But I'm like, okay, what happened to snakes, right? <laughs> Spiders, right? Okay, I'll just go there. Uh, anyway, uh, number two, heights, yes. Um, going to the dentist, number, I got all, I'm three for three. Dentist, uh, snakes, so four for four, flying, nope, not scared of that. Spiders and insects. Not really. Um, and, and I don't even kill them anymore. I respect them and I get them and let them out. Um, and if they keep, I do warn them though. If you come over here with the wrong mindset, I'm going to have to send you to the light. <laughs> there you go. Um, mice, dogs, thunder and lightning. Now, we all know those are not, that. those are just the ones we admit to. Those are the ones we admit to. Uh, so, gentlemen, go around. Uh, do any of you have any fears? Yeah. My last, my last fear was uh, fear of losing my sight. Ooh, talk about that for a second. Just growing up, I didn't understand what it meant. It, I thought it was the physical losing my sight, but but then I realized it was. I think I was afraid to fully see, is what it was. I was afraid to actually see the truth and know the truth, and and so now that you know, I've had that experience, and then the what? other, the other. Why were you afraid you were going to lose your sight? It was just a, a, an innate fear, I guess. You know, growing up, people have different fears of different things. And it just for some reason, my biggest fear was always just uh, it would hit me every once, every few months, once every, you know, half a year where I'd just be like, man, it would really suck to be blind. Um, but then wow. I, I realized what that meant. And then the other fear for me that I still have a, a little bit to this day is uh, not being there for my children. Uh, not my two sons, which are my world. So that those. You mean those, like if you were to pass prematurely or something? Yeah, it's something I'm still kind of you know I've seen some things that that tell me kind of the, the the you know what's going on in the universe, but I'm still you know this mortal coil still not ready to leave his son yet, their son. So. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. So how much say so do you think you have in that matter? Zero. Oh. <laughs> Just asking. Zero. Okay. Uh, let's go straight down. We're playing Brady Bunch uh, or Secret Squ Secret Square. As what about you? Any fears? Yeah, I think my fear is the, the fear and uh, the thing that I want the most are the same. It's to really be truly seen. Like being seen in all of my whatever it is. I think that's been the greatest fear that never goes away, but that continues to give me opportunity to just be. So is it fear of being seen or is it fear of being invisible? Both. Right, okay. both. Of being seen and, and not seen, or maybe judged in that scene. Ah, that could be it too. Yeah, there it is. Okay, yeah. thank you for that, Lane. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, for me, fear is something that uh, I've been working with <laughs> and befriending because, uh, you know, my perspective is that if we can allow fear to be an ally, almost as a uh, a friend that I don't I don't think is a friend, but actually is a friend, you know, to reveal to me 
you know, a way to expand, a way to grow and only when I'm ready. You know, it's almost like this fear is like the pumping of the brakes of what I'm ready for. And so mm. in this moment, the fear is, is allowing me to be contained into a certain place. And for me, the, the, the most recent fear that I'm, I'm working through is to be completely happy all the time. And for, for me, it's like I can be happy in spurts. I can be happy in periods of time, chapters. But to be at my core, just be OK with happy. It's this very subtle thing to just, you know, lay on the beach and then just like not because I'm laying on the beach, not because I'm not doing anything, just because I'm just being who I am. Mm. And there's this, li this little sliver of like, ooh, like, am I ready to to always or 99 percent of the time? just be happy because I'm being me, you know? So that's, that's one of the, you know, the most recent fears that I'm working through. And, um, but for me, fear is, is, uh, something that I am continuously allowing to be an ally to shift my perspective, to, to allow that to be advantageous to my journey. Mm, awesome. A lot of stuff in there. Thank you. Oh. I personally find that, and I think I'm the eldest, <laughs> here and uh, at 59 I'll be 60 in July I would have to say and I'm grateful for it for being able to say it like this because it's the truth I'm more fearful of things that are not here than I am things that are tangible like I used to be I used to be afraid of things you know um or opportunities uh things like that now I'm I'm not afraid of death for instance I was used to be afraid of dying uh, although I was vested in killing myself, go figure. Um, but that changed, and because I started dying to the things every day that didn't serve me, so death was like, was like now this is the hard. Those are the hard deaths. Uh, the transition is not, I believe. And I, but I'm when as far as something with the dead word in it, deadlines. I'm afraid of missing my deadlines as far as what my soul agrees. Uh, to accomplish or try to accomplish while being here. And so that's that's that for me. But, you know, I do believe, too, that anything that makes our heart beat a little bit faster, which is what we, we really need, because that means we're moving out of our comfort zone, something we yet have mastered, uh, is a good thing. The question mark is a good thing. Um, the unknown is a good thing because, you know, there is a little thing that says, seek and ye shall find. Doesn't say might, could, probably. It says you will. And so that's the thing. No matter what, you know, if you got to hold a mirror up to look around the corner, look, you know what I'm saying? Uh, mm. Look in the direction of something and look in the direction that you want to go. That's what a lot of us forget. I believe they look, we look in the direction we've already been, but you, you try driving your car, looking just in the rear view mirror. It's there to remind you of what's behind you, not guide you to what is in front of you. Think about that. Let it hang for just a second. So uh, I thought we'd take a look at, at So here's how we're going to start and take a look at a little piece of video, which I have not previewed. I just like the title. Um, I, I asked Google, show me something about why people seek a spiritual journey. It was a ton. Um, um, they, I, it looked like I just kind of let spirit guide me. So let's take a look. We'll know when to stop. And, uh, and then we're just going to talk about what we've heard and what it means to each of us. And then we're going to also build on some of the comments and questions coming from the audience. So uh, let me go ahead and share that out right now. And let's see, we're watching this for the first time together. So um, I don't know what to expect. Today, Today I want to talk, talk about, about why. Why on earth am I doing this? this? What is the spiritual journey anyway? And why would someone want to be on one? Stay tuned to find out. Hi, I'm Amanda Root, and this is The Spiritual Journey, the channel where we talk about anything and everything from a spiritual perspective. If that sounds intriguing to you, please subscribe. I'm intrigued. Imagine if you asked a thousand different people why they are on a spiritual journey, you would get a thousand different answers. Some people are probably born into spiritual families and they grow up learning and developing their beliefs. For them, this is all they've ever known. But that certainly wasn't my experience. Others I know arrive at spirituality suddenly, 
through a significant event in their lives, death or another kind of tragedy, or even something more positive, like the birth of a child. And an event like this shakes your world and causes you to question, well, everything. For me, it all began with an illness. After a couple of years of doctor's appointments and tests, I was finally diagnosed with fibromyalgia. That was 15 years ago. When I look back now, I can see that this was really when I started to question things. Why do I need this job that makes me miserable? Why do I need this house that takes so much work and money to maintain? Do I really need this many square feet to be happy? What does happiness mean? Yeah. Okay. Right there, I think we've heard enough to start this 20-minute, 15-minute segment um, on uh, spiritual journey. So let's start with how you found your way into your spiritual journey. Where She brought up some good points. Some people are born into it. Most of the people I know were born into a religious. And you see what I'm doing uh, uh, a tight family. And um, when we got to the point where we knew we needed more, we ran like the Dickens. I know I did uh, because it was just not what I was looking for, but it did give me a lot of things uh, to hold on to, to pull my way up into what is real. Um, you know what I'm saying? So I'd like to know, uh, cause there's near death experiences that get people there. There's like she said, an illness or the birth of a child can be that kind of a thing. So let's start with what happened with each of you. Uh, Jesse, you go ahead and kick this one off. I appreciate, appreciate it. Thank you. Um, you know, for me, it's been a lifelong initiation of uh, unbelievable events. And the, the road is is coming back to remembering who I am and, and knowing, you know, what I've always been meant to do. And it, it took, you know, I'll be 40 in a few weeks, a couple weeks. And it really took until this year, my 39th year of, of, of being on this planet to really have, a, have a, an idea of what my calling is. And, you know, there's a lot of unbelievable life circumstances that I've, I've, I've either had given to me or put into my own journey. And we talked about a little bit of this, but some of the cliff notes are, you know, growing up a poor kid, growing up, you know, uh, with a single mom, growing up, uh, you know, with a dad that was a heroin addict for many years and a, and a, and a drug addict for 30 years of his life before he cleaned up. And you know, being bullied physically, beat up for years, uh, getting my ass kicked in the mean streets of Boston. And uh, these things were happening for me. They weren't happening to me. Um, and, you know, growing through that, I had my own, you know, bout with uh, drug addiction for two years. And I ended up shooting heroin for six months and I became my dad. And in becoming my dad, it gave me the greatest love and empathy for him because I understood where he was coming from. And I, and I loved him more because of that journey. And I was able to get away to, 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 clean up and join the military and it completely changed my life. And, um, I was able to get back to who I was to a degree, which was motivated, hungry, you know, cause I had a job when I was 13 and I was working through high school and, um, you know, I was entrepreneurial minded as a kid buying, selling, trading comic books, baseball cards, kind of hustling, you know, and that hustle was always there, but I got derailed because of the trauma that I had experienced and I didn't know how to cope with that trauma. And so I, I, I turned to medicating myself with the wrong things. And, you know, through my life's journey, I've held my daughter till she passed away. I've held my mom's hand till she passed away. Um, you know, I've had beautiful experiences. I've built a great family and, and, and a great career, great businesses and raising two amazing sons that I'm, you know, would do anything for. And all of these life moments have taught me how to, you know, number one, how to heal through those things so that I can learn how to heal myself through anything. And then number two, I turn around and be, I'm able to give this experience and, and create containers for other people so they can do their own healing as well. And so for me, it's been a lifelong journey coupled with growing up Catholic in Boston. I never really truly believed in that very religious sect of things, but I always was a seeker and I was always pulled towards my truth. And then over the last couple of years, it's been very heavy. It's been working with plant medicines and, you know, deep inner work and, and healing work to bring me to the realization of who I am and, and how I show up in this world. So it's been a lifelong journey. It's been an incredible journey, and I'm grateful for all of it. Awesome. Thank you for that. Hey, Ez. What says Ez? You're muted. There we go. Nope. There, there we go. Unmuted myself. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. So, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting question. There's been 
like a lot of different instances where the journey has been more in my face. But I'd say since I was young, I was suicidal around the age of eight. I tried to commit suicide, didn't do a good job at it. And then <laughs> there's been the hammering down on myself since then. There's been a lot in my family that I feel like I've reconciled at this point. You know, so now it all just seems like story to me, which I appreciate. But just like Jesse said, all of these things have helped to bring me closer to life. And so the question that's always been with me, and I was thinking about this yesterday in the ocean. I went surfing just deep, deep in the waters here just to go be with the ocean is, you know, what is it to be here? And being, being in this skin, having the journey of, you know, being a black man in this world, but also loving it, loving all the, the different um, projections that are placed upon me. And then looking at the projections within my family, looking at the dynamics between myself and everyone else that I get to connect with. And it's so, so it's really been just wanting to understand and, you know, like connecting with, what it is to actually decide to want to be here and all the responsibility that comes with that. That would be my answer. You know, it's, it's been a continual, gradual unfoldment of, of seeking truth and then questioning that truth as well and just seeing, just observing what is. Okay. Lane. Thank Beautiful. you. Beautiful. I love, I love both your answers, by the way, you know, and oh. it's like, it's not just one point. It's yeah. where, the, the conversation is just kind of hops onto the, the journey, you know, and how we uh, articulate that hopping on the journey, you know, is, is a beautiful way to, you know, express. So for me, it's more along the conscious storytelling. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so for me, my story is, uh, you know, growing up with not a lot of whole me, not a whole lot of means, you know, born in an apartment, homeless, you know, first six months with my mom. And then, you know, so I went through this like journey of like just being in the dirt, you know, in the, in the mud. And uh, for me, that's been my story. It's been to throw myself into, you know, difficult, the challenge, the, the, the different types of experiences and seeing if I could get out of it, you know? And of course I know I could, but at the time, you know, it's just like, man, this is a tough, this is a tough challenge, you know? So, Growing up, not being popular, not, you know, these kinds of things. And then a different chapter in my life, special forces training, like super gritty, hardcore. And then the repercussions or the, the effect of, you know, being in the military for 12 years and then getting out and saying, hey, you know what? What's another challenge I could throw myself into? You yeah. know, and, and so for me, it's about conscious storytelling. And I love that. What that what that means for me is that it's it could have a little playful flavor to it. You know, as an author, I could be a, you know, a kid's writer. I could be a horror, you know, thriller. I could be a dramatic, you know, action. I could be uh, self-help, <laughs> you know. So as a storyteller, as an author, you know, I, ha I have flexibility based on what the moment calls for. And so then it kind of goes back to what Ez was saying. It's like, well, what's, what's the truth that I want to share in this moment or in this period of time? Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's been a beautiful story so far. And, uh, you know, I still got challenges. I still got fears. And, and uh, the beauty of it is that we can write not only our story, but we can co-write, co co-author, a joint story, a joint adventure, and a joint moment like we have today. Oh. Yeah, I agree. I love that. I love that. Uh, as did you have something? No, oh, no. I, I just I would like to hear for you. I was just swiping my forehead. Oh, oh, I'm, oh, I'm oh. in Mexico, so I'm here. I'm I'm with the heat. The sun's gonna move. The background's gonna be whatever. I'm just present okay. in the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, mine uh kind of happened in a. Well, born into a, a, a religious sect, I guess you could say, um, Seventh-day Adventist. So it was different for us from the get-go, you know, because we didn't watch TV on the Sabbath, uh, you know, wow. sundown Friday to sundown Saturday and all kinds of things. Um, but for me, I would have to say, you know, around nine when I entered the foster system, after my, my adoptive mother died. Um, I was in all kinds of homes where they were Catholic back then. They didn't have a vetting process. I just don't know if they do yet, uh, where they would put a kid in any kind of home. Um, so I could be in a Mormon home on Tuesday and then the 
a Southern Baptist home by Saturday. So that's what I believe uh, uh, drop kicked the door open for me to find my own thing. That is where my spirit's hand was grabbed by uh, the hand of what is spirit. And so um, that's where I be began the, the road of understanding the oneness is how I first uh, was told. Uh, so that was it for me. Um, and it's changed continually, continually. And I, I hope that it does continue to change continually, <laughs> uh, you know, because I have more say so in it now. Um, and, and that's when it got really good to me. That's the ooey gooey chewy center of that spiritual tootsie pop. So that's my answer. Um, so I wanted to ask, I think this is interesting. Each of us, if you go back to the beginning, what did you refer to, if anything, what was your name for the ultimate being? God, whatever, whatever. And what is it today? Start with you, Lane. Um, I think you know, growing up, I was Christian and uh, God was the was the term. Okay. And after a while, you know, just started asking a lot of questions and and really just sinking into a deep truth that I could feel within my bones in the deepest part of me. And I wasn't quite satisfied with that, you know, and, and the the description or the, the articulation or the definition. And so that was part of my journey for sure. And nowadays, you know, it's just, you know, I, I leave it loose. You know, there's probably seven or eight, but it's like about I can I can like actually see like my or feel my head just open of like, yeah, there's some words that I could use. But it's more of like a feeling and uh, a vibe, you know, and yeah, we could use some words. But uh, for me, it's about that feeling of openness uh, to be able to use whatever word is in the moment. Mm. So correct me if I'm wrong or I'm just off a bit, but it kind of sounds like you refer to it as it presents itself. It's, you know, but, you know. By definition, if we were to define it, we would contain it. And so for me in the present moment, I'd rather not contain it. And then if, if the moment calls that I need to use a specific word, like the word will come for this particular moment. To fit the experience. And right now, I'm not saying a word. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to leave it as open as possible for anybody that's watching. Okay. Because those words, in all the cases, are, they represent symbols. And, you know, and that's where a lot of people are captured uh away uh you know they they're they're swooped and and and, and carried off away from uh what they're actually looking for inside of those symbols we'll get deeper into that later as has something to say about that one because i can see it's it beautiful all right. yeah, I yeah just you know it's nice to get to sit with you brothers and see how what i love in these moments is the commonalities you know so we have i was raised catholic starting off and then i ended up hebrew then i ended up just into everything so i i i've started with God and the word God. And then I ended up with, if you could say I'm soft, like the, the undescribable. I often will say source and leave it at that or just the everything. And everything again is putting it in the context of a word. Maybe there's something beyond our construct of everything. And, and at least with, you know, Jesse and Lane, we've been in, um, we've been in a ceremonial space together where, where you get to experience something that we might call the everything. And so I, I tend not to to call it anything but source or the everything. That would be it. For me. Source, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Before we get to Jesse T, a um, little something from Robert. He says that certainly added layers of contrast. I must be something ahead of that that I didn't pick up. I remember Catholic Sunday service, always finishing right on time. And then there was the non-denominational church. So pretty much everything he's saying was church, 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 which seems to be uh, how we all got in so far. And then one more. Oh, yes. Jamie, I was raised and baptized Mormon in Missouri. I understand Utah Mormons are more Mormonized. Oh, well, whatever that means. I know exactly what it means. Uh, uh, yes, I do. Uh, let's see here. There's another. Oh, Sherry McQueen. She goes, her awakening started in 2019 with an illness. But looking back on her life, there were moments that it could have started sooner, but I was not aware. Everything happens for a reason. Okay. 
Thank you all. Keep your comments and questions coming. We'll get to them, I promise. Uh, Jesse T., uh, what say you? Uh, what was it then and what is it now? Very much similar. It was God in the beginning, and now it's more um, like a unity consciousness. It's, 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 uh, it's universe. It's, it's source. Again, it's nothing that you can wrap words around, and, and, and our, our, our minds are not capable of understanding the, the vastness, but I do understand the love and the connectedness of it. So um, to be determined in terms of my journey. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. So pretty much everybody started with God and then it's up for interpretation thereafter. And that's really how it should be. There's an age of accountability uh, where, you know, uh, and there's in most cultures and, it, you know, whether it's just, uh, um, you know, the, the area you're from in the world, or if it's a, a, a religious thing, there's always a, an age of accountability, like when kids are allowed to get baptized and make decisions, even in the Bible stories, when Jesus was allowed to go into the temple and all of that sort of thing, and bar mitzvahs and all mm. of them, bar mitzvah. Sorry about that, is Oh, wait. No. Is that the same thing? <laughs> right. Hebrew, Jew, that, that's the same, right? Yeah, yeah. That, say, what is it? Oh, this bar and bath, but you know, I don't practice any of, I just honor it all. The whole thing is, you know, we speak to religion. I would just say this, like at this point, religion is what, for me, it's what a person practices in that moment is their religion. In well, the I moment, think, in, in from moment to moment, you know? I think organized religions are necessary. And that's why we find them in every culture in one form or another. Um, you know, because um, even at, say like Native American, you wouldn't consider it a religion. I don't think, but uh, it is sacred. Wherever anything is sacred, holy, that sort of thing, you know. Um, and I look at it as a diving board for all of us, uh, most of us, a lot of us, to yeah. uh, get into the pool of ascension, uh, you know, uh -huh. the pool of journey, the pool of the quest. So um, I'm grateful for it because <laughs> everything needs a, a, a in the beginning or a once upon a time. And uh, <laughs> religion seems to be that. For many, so uh -huh. uh, we, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna uh, go to just a brief break, and when we t come back, we're gonna jump into the the uh, question of what exactly, if it can be exact, think about that is a soul. Think about that, and we're gonna get to that when we come back. Share the broadcast out. Be good to others, so the world and the the universe can be good to you. Uh, get them in here. You won't be sorry. Don't go away. We'll be back in one minute. stuff going on there i got kicked out of the broadcast and you know oh we stirring up something i'll tell you that you come on cletus come on 
I'm going to tell you like I tell them all the time. I'm not a grandmama clump. I'm not going to say you'll walk over and limp back because when I get done with you, I want you cut completely in half. I want all your entrails hanging behind you and run back and tell anything else that wants some of this. It's here. I do it like that because I used to be afraid and I'm not anymore. I claim my place in purpose. I do. So one of the things I also claim is that I do love this. I really do. And I'm not saying that because they pay me. I already know. Everybody tell my family. Yo, I never saw that at your house. Well, don't mean one here. I love me some V8 because it helped me do better. I got rid of the Diet Coke and replaced it. It was not difficult at all. It was just a choice. Why did I choose? Easy. Because it is two full servings of vegetables in every single can. It has 100% vegetable juice from concentrate. And guess what? The best part? Only 60 calories. Easy peasy to find. Simply head down the juice aisle in your local grocer. In my store, it's right next to the Kool-Aid boxes. V8. Do yourself a favor. Don't say, I wish I would have had one. Manifest it and get one. That's what I say. V8. Grab yours today. Okay. Here they come. One, two, and three. We're back. All in a different place. Now, we mixed it up. You can't hear me? Oh, I thought, see, okay, that was, uh, I thought that was uh, Zoom uh, stuff like, I was like, don't tell me I did that whole product placement without being heard. So we were, before we went, we talked about a, little, a few things before we went to break, but I wanted, okay, I thought I got booted off again. See, we're talking about fears. And they say, okay, okay, okay thank you. All right, all right, here we go. The soul or soul. Soul mate, soul music, soul food, soul. Um, definition, what's it mean in your world? We'll start with Lane. What's soul to you? <laughs> Was a tough one. <laughs> no, uh, for me, I guess, you know, for the first thing that comes to mind is an essence. And it's, it's, a, it's a loosely defined set of frequencies intertwined. And each frequency has has its own individual essence, you know, and, the, and so it's like this piece of rope, you know, uh, and each strand within the, the bigger piece, you know, has, has a kind of differentiated or a, a different essence. But when you put it all together, you know, you have a, this overall essence that's changed. That's you unique, can transform that's different from looking like an AP home video. Mm hmm. You can. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. I didn't know if you could. Yeah. Something on souls in another window. Um, okay. Go ahead, Lane. Sorry. Yeah. So that's, you know, for me, that's, that's the, that's the root of it, you know, and what comes out of that, you know, is a lot of other stuff. And I'd love to hear. I know. Perspective I know a lot of people. Like, what we can come up with. <laughs> right. Okay. Jess. For me, what I understand is the soul is your true essence. It's your true being. You know, we, we, we choose to be here in this time for certain reasons and, and, and our soul has, has made an agreement to be here. And so just for some, uh, kind of some color and some context, I was on a plant medicine journey with Lane a while back and the journey was playful and it was loving. And, you know, I had asked that journey to the intention was to be shown what my superpower was, but I wasn't revealed to that until a few days later. But on that journey, I got to see what I was taken as, as, as my soul. And it was uh, my soul was traveling through eternity with Lane, Lane's soul. And it was I was wearing a golden headdress and I really couldn't make out the rest of the body. But I was almost like the soul surfer over here with as like I was traveling through the cosmos and I could see my soul. Shout out to Silver Surfer, one of my favorites. Uh, but anyway, Ooh, mine too. Uh, I think that. <laughs> Like Lane said, it's it's a combination of um, all the goodness, and it's you, you, we come to this earth to learn lessons. Our soul wants to be here, and I also believe our soul has, you know, eons of life to it. I don't think it's uh, you know just one and done. I think we move on and we do something else from here, and we reincarnate, and you know we have another experience, or we go somewhere else. So it's again loosely defined, but I am I am starting to learn more about it with my journey. Okay, there we go. Two down, one to go. I'm loving your answers, brother. I, I feel, you know, resonance with that. I think I would, and I think about this a lot, obviously. Um, I would say it's an individuated, like, piece of a whole consciousness that dives into different mediums to have an experience of creating, co-creating, writing, as you say, Lane, you know, uh, experiencing 
reflecting, integrating, and unfolding in and on itself. And then it continues. So, so I look at this life as a gestation, a gestation for the soul, you know, nonstop gestation, hence the term doula. And I also would say I don't know at the same time. Mm, okay. Those are my two. My All two right. one answer. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. It's kind of interesting <laughs> how each person has their own, but as it should be, um, because I believe our souls have a DNA, um, just like our bodies, our human form. But for me, uh, soul is, I look at soul, my soul, as if it's the room that I possess inside the oneness. As the, mm. it's the oneness were a home, if it were a hotel, my soul is the, is one of the rooms within it. Uh, or if, you know, if it's a place, the, my soul is the na- is a neighborhood in the, inside that world, uh, you know. Uh, so I, I, I just feel that because I always feel like uh, soul is what sends me the back si- bat signal known as uh, intuition. It is mm-hmm. that it's like one ringy ding. It's the operator. Can I connect you? You know, um, so uh, it's the thing where I stop because of my own human lim- limitations or frailties. It continues. Mm-hmm. Uh, those things that I can drag all the way up to as close as I can get to the finish line, even if, if I'm 10 million miles away from the finish line or 10 centimeters, it can pick up whatever it is and bring it right over to me. So soul is what I believe I co-author through. Uh-huh. I believe that what is greater than is who I co-author with. And that's how it works in my, my universe for me. So, you guys, out there, love to know my job. Ding, 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 ding. Hit it one more time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we got some uh, some input from uh, our viewers, Keith Mullins. How are you, Mr. Keith? Uh, how's the next book coming along? And Keith, um, Keith, just is it okay if I share? No, if you want to share what you texted me yesterday, um, go ahead because I believe it's going to tie in with something we're either have already talked about or we'll be talking about Keith. So I'm going to ask you permission. Um, He says, our soul to me is our ethereal being. It comes to the form we now have what it is called to help others through their journey. Okay. Okay. Yes, you can. Keith just told me yesterday, um, and we we do a little bit of work together from time to time, that he was just diagnosed, I think, yeah, kidney cancer. And so Keith, as we talk about, you know, because sometimes when our our mortality is challenged, it's really a door, you know, trauma. I've never had a trauma, experience a trauma that didn't have a doggy door where a future blessing was born into the process of becoming at the same time. So it's never about just one thing. So Keith, uh, I'm glad you're here. And uh, we're going to, if anything resonates or anything you feel like you're being, you know, shown that you want to share, please do, do so. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Robert Brooker, souls, us, all of them considered together. Guys, what do you think about what Robert said? I think the beauty of what uh, as was saying about I don't know is that it balances the definitiveness of an answer while also remaining open to something more, you know. So, yeah, I think I think everybody's definition will be slightly different, and how to how to articulate that, you know, is just uh, it's the beauty of our individual journey. You know, all four of us here have slightly different answers, but there's also a core, uh, you know, resemblance of, you know familiarity and yeah i agree i agree from one of the viewers jamie very interesting thank you for this jamie lane uh in regards to religion spirituality and alike we are so removed from nature we rely on buildings for food in lieu of land we rely on governing body to dictate our finances for example we rely on made-up rules for the greedy and have stopped thinking for ourselves in short the closer we get to nature the closer we shall get to our own our, our divine selves, our souls. We get to know ourselves and fall in love. Once we love ourselves, then we may give and love others. Mm, mm. I to ring the bell. Three on that one. Beautiful. That one three ringer. What say you all? How do you feel about what Jamie said? She's speaking from her truth and she's speaking to some uh, eternal truths there. I mean, you know, nature is nurture. And, and if you get into nature, you will be nurtured. And, and much like my brother, as we have so many, like, so many things in common my soul is belongs to the ocean 
and I grew up in mm-hmm. Boston on the ocean and I always grew up wanting to surf and you can't surf in Boston because the waves are too small. But like for me, I always knew my soul was called there because it, it brought me to peace. It brought me to center. It brought me to my true essence, which is love. And, and much like Lane and as know, because they've been on journeys with me or facilitated journeys with me uh, or, you know, for me, you know, my, my true essence is love and to be love and receive love. And, and, and that is something that you can find in nature, whether it's the forest, the mountains, you know, the deserts, the oceans, there's something very, you realize in a beautiful way, honestly, how much you really don't matter. Like the world's going to go on without you. And the world is this big, beautiful place. And yes, you have your time and your part, but at the end of the day, you just got to do the best you can while you're here and move on. And the world will teach you that. Mm, Nice. I agree. I agree. Now, sometimes And there's, for those who are just stepping out on faith, if you will, um, I know, I remember in my own journey at the forefront, it was very confusing. There was so many different things coming from so many different directions. I felt like there should have been some type of Rosetta Stone program for spirituality, if you will, (laughs) to help me understand all the different dialects. So what I mean by that is, and we're going to take a quick look at something and then talk about that. Uh, What the difference between soul and spirit? I remember when I thought they were one and the same. So Mm. let's take a listen. Hey guys, guys, now what what is is the the difference difference between between your soul and your spirit? Well, Daniel, is it not the same thing? Well, no, it's not. Definitely not. Now I've been talking about this in some of my other videos because once you start to grasp to understand what this difference is between your soul and your spirit, it has a huge impact on your spiritual growth. So in this video, we're going to look at what the Bible says about your soul and your spirit. Mm. Let's get to it. Really quick. Now, just very quick, if it's your first time here on my channel, I'm Daniel Moritz, and welcome to DLF. Get a free plug. (laughs) If you haven't yet, consider subscribing and also clicking that notification bell so you won't miss any of the next (laughs) videos. Now, the Bible is very clear. There's a huge difference between your soul and your spirit, and you need to know what that is. Hebrews 4, verse 12. Okay, so there we go. Soul and spirit through go straight to... Christianity. The reason I pulled that one up because it was top ranked in Google when I posed the question. So what does that mean that it goes straight to organized religion? Now, I'm going to tell you, I I love the Bible. It's one of the greatest storybooks ever written, seriously. But the thing that allows me the freedom to challenge things within it is the right on it. It says King James's version. Every Bible has a version. NIV version is version. And to me, version means someone's take, which means they put in what they wanted. They left out what they wanted or what they didn't want, as the case may be. So I think it is up to us and what is inside of us, perhaps soul, intuition, uh, uh, you know, to pick and choose what works for us. So let's talk about that. Um, Let's go around and start. Let's start with you, Lane. Is there a difference? Do you believe they're the same soul versus spirit? What do you say? Yeah, this is actually an area where I haven't really done much searching. (laughs) Um, So for me, though, I guess, you know, the soul is more of an individual aspect. And for me, the the spirit is the the things that flows through me, out of me, and through the all. And that's, that's as simply as I have it, you know, I... I don't have any specific research or anything like that, but that's how I look at it. Great. And as, as how about you? You you get that like you yeah. see coming across the ocean or something. I'm yeah. gonna tell you. So, <laughs> what I like to do in these gatherings is just to like open up my channel, so to say, whatever that means. Yeah. Okay. And so, you know, as we were talking to the soul, the soul is witnessing, and progressing through, I feel the spirit could be something that animates uh, the journey, maybe the machinery, if you would. But then when the question was first asked, I heard just the whisper of nothing. In other words, nothing. The difference between the two is nothing. And just to add to it, you know, I took a walk a while ago in town, in Tulum, just trying to allow for 
myself to be a part of everything that's existing here. I mean, I am, right? I don't know where I stop and all of this begins, where I stop and where you begin. I just know when we bump into each other or when we recognize each other, I learn something and I take something and hopefully I give something. So I feel like I like the answer of nothing is the difference between, but I also have fun with creating and, and storying uh, and getting to listen to the story of what's what was there before this consciousness became aware of this like this part in the timeless and uh, just hearing what we have to say. And right. so, so like I, I know what it is to feel at odds with everything that's going on around you and also to feel like, shit, this is all me. That dog shit that I just wiped off my shoes alive. It's me. I hate to say it, you know, and, and so what to do about it? You know, wipe it off. Not tracking it in my house. But, it's, <laughs> it's, you know, but also like I honor it because where is, where is it? It just made it me aware of it. That's all. Bye. Poop. <laughs> you know, and I move yes. on to being aware of something that I prefer to pay attention to. I think that would be my answer. Awesome. Honoring all answers in that. Absolutely. Uh, back to the viewers, Jamie, thank you for this. Um, and I agree. Uh, actually, I brought you in before I answer because this is exactly how I would answer. Exactly. Um, my, my soul, she says, is my current state, my essence or spirit or will always exist. That's what I believe passes throughout Mother Earth through time in different forms. And uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's like I believe in, in just a little uh, footnote for myself. Uh, for me, soul, spirit, all that, it's like the, it's the surfboard that I ride on, that my, my purpose, my reason for being, um, my reason for staying, my reason for doing, uh, rides on it. Um, you know, magic carpet, surfboard, but it is a, a method of transport uh, for me, for me to be able to accomplish and, and work uh, between, and it also, for me, allows me to, uh, time travel, remembering, and it also allows me to navigate in, con, in, in a conjoined way with what is on the other side of the veil, everything that's riding parallel, sidecar, and has all along, all along. So that's kind of how it works for me. Uh, another thing, uh, what did you say, Lori? The Ten Commandments is important without following to obey them won't get you to a better place. Give me some more, Lori. Give me some more. You must be. Are you uh, multitasking again? <laughs> Lamar Ross, hello to you, my man. Eric Rose. Welcome, Eric. A guest from earlier this week uh, from the, the, the boy band that is now a grown man uh, group of friends for, what, 30 years now, 20 years, Eric. Uh, glad to see you. He goes, is our soul our higher self? Uh, let's throw that one to the group. Anybody? Is our soul? I'll leave it up. Uh, is our soul our higher self? Uh, Jess, they're pointing to you. <laughs> you know, it could be one way to describe it, right? And it goes back to the indescribable. It, it makes sense that, that it could be, um, but our higher self always operates in love and in truth and in and, and wisdom and in joy and abundance. And so, you know, if the soul operates there 24-7, I would say, yes, I just don't know if it does. So to be determined. To be determined. Okay. Who is that down there? Somebody... Who is Chris Shivers? Oh, it's Big Spoon. <laughs> oh, this is Big Spoon. Can't wait to meet you, Big Spoon. What to do? <laughs> okay, I don't know if what he's are the odds? Here. <laughs> Beautiful. If he okay, I'm starting to see something. Okay, he is here. Woo! There he is. Okay. Uh -huh. who this is? Hell yeah, Big Spoon, baby. Uh, well, you're muted, Big Spoon. Good morning, morning, morning. How are y'all? Good. How are you? <laughs> Love it. Cool. Alive. <laughs> so, Making a cameo appearance, I guess. Yeah, I just stepped out of the ice. I just oh, yeah. stepped out of the ice, so I wanted to. I've been listening in, though. It's been a. Uh, what do you mean you stepped out of the ice? How was, wait, wait. The ice <laughs> as in what? Like an ice bath? A... Uh, yeah, my uh, my wife and I dunk. Uh, she's been called the Wim Hof. Uh, that's her journey. And so uh, we dunk every morning in a uh, ice bath of like 45 to 50 degree water. Nice. So, oh. uh, yeah, we do it once uh, once or twice a day. You'd be okay. it's just a it's a wow. beautiful release. Awesome. It's a very I've had Kundalini moments in the ice. I mean, it's 
It's powerful, powerful I stuff. Set the stone I spoke of. It's kind of neat. I'm like, what? Now, listen, I'm going to just tell you, I'm well versed in dunking because I do it myself about twice a week. Oh, wait. That's Dunkin', Dunkin' Donuts. Sorry. Yes, he did. Right. Um, well, welcome uh, to this illuminated conversation, Chris, a.k.a. Big Spoon. Um, Thank you. We're gonna, so Facebook user, hi, can you see my comments? We can see your comments. <laughs> Um, this says you're the only person. Well, that's because you're on one of the 16 platforms. If you want us to see you, uh, head over to Bathrobe Moments on Facebook, and you'll be able to interact um, in real time with us, and we'll see your face and all that. But we do see your comments. So if you want to ask away and just tell us your name, we won't call you Facebook user again, I promise. So there that is. Uh, let's take a moment so Big Chris can uh, get uh, himself settled in. I want to... Start thinking about, we have about, wow, it's 9.06. We have less than a half hour. Uh, let's go into this one because this is a good one. It's, it's controversial to some people, but that's why we're here. We're going to, uh, uh, for a second here, go into, well, it's been alluded to here. I think uh, Jess said that he took a, what did you, wait, I wrote it down. Um, plant medicine journey. Uh, and a lot of somebody out there said, that's just another name for drugs. So we're going to find out about what that was all about. But let's take a look at what is known as revealing the mind, the promise, the promise of psychedelics. This ought to be good. Taking LSD was a profound experience. One of the most important things in my life, it reinforced my sense of what was important, Steve Jobs. LSD wanted to tell me something. It gave me an inner joy, an open-mindedness, a gratefulness, open eyes, and an eternal sensitivity for the miracles of creation. George Harrison says, it was fantastic. I felt in love, not with anything or anybody in particular, but with everything. And then, it's a very... Salute, what is that? Salutary thing. Salutary? Salutary. To realize that the, somebody tell me what that means. To, yeah, 12th grade education. All of your conceptual reality gets jerked away and there are things in your mind that have in no way been suggested to you. Jack never said, uh-oh. I'm glad I had the experience. It taught me what the mind is capable of. Oh, some expansion. Welcome everyone, I'm Emily Sine, tonight's moderator. You just saw these quotes from these noted actors, musicians, authors, and scientists, and they all credit psychedelics with providing them profound insights, really life-changing insights. And as Oliver Sacks uh, said, he, he once wrote that psychedelics revealed to him what the mind is capable of. And in fact, that's the definition of psychedelics, the modern definition, meaning mind or soul revealing. Mm. Well, these chemicals have actually been part of the human story for much longer uh, than recent times, way before scientists elucidated their chemical structures or even named them. Uh, so tonight, uh, before we meet our panelists and get into the discussion, let's get a little introduction to this long, strange trip. Humans have been using plants and fungus to change the experience of consciousness for a very long time. 9,000 year old cave paintings depict rituals with psychedelic mushrooms. Psychedelics are often used in religious ceremonies as sacraments or for divination and healing. It wasn't until the mid 20th century that science got with the program. Early psychedelics research transformed neuroscience. We began treating five patients for 26 days. In clinical trials, psychedelics like LSD showed extraordinary potential. It's an important drug in treatment of mental and emotional disorder. These substances rose from obscurity to miraculous promise in a matter of years. Dangerous and deadly. These have those consequences. All of a sudden, there are these scare stories in the media. Psychedelics were soon perceived as a threat to public safety and global stability. It's a very dangerous, very dangerous drug. 
President Nixon went to the Narcotics Bureau today to sign a drug bill. And by the early 70s, essentially the research has stopped. The golden age of psychedelic science was over. But this story began in 1943. A young Swiss chemist named Albert Hoffmann is working at a pharmaceutical company in Switzerland tasked with formulating a new stimulant. Okay, 1943, it, it got its, you know, boom, punted right into uh, mainstream world. So who here, by a show of hands, has had a psychedelic, we won't say trip, because we're not at a Jerry Garcia concert, um, but uh, I have been there on the chairs doing the bear dance, trust, and in the sick tent. So um, raise your hands if you've been on the psychedelic journey. Is Chris frozen? Yeah, oh, there he is. <laughs> I am Chris. I can look at that beard and know you. You probably own one right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess technically, I am in a microdosing protocol, so technically, I am. See. So there you go. There you go. Oh, yeah. So okay, uh, did everyone raise their hand? As as did you? We raised. Both I, raised hands. I raised two hands, and my toes yeah. are raised as well. <laughs> okay, so how many people, so you know. when you first tried it, was it just to get high? Was it just on a trip where you party in? To be honest, because I'm 59, so yeah. Spiritualism That's wasn't even first. really a thing when I did it. We were at a rate. My first mm, was an yeah. initiation for me. Yeah. Was it what? It was an initiation the first time I tried it with um, ayahuasca and washuma. What? So it wasn't it wasn't recreational, so to say. My first time trying any psychedelic wasn't recreational. And was and what was it? What form was it in for you, Ash? I it was in a ceremonial space on yeah, the island form? of Hawaii. Was it a, a, a micro dot? What was it? A drop? It was, what was wasn't it? a micro? No, it was it was in the form <laughs> of a of a drink. It was of a drink. A drink. Yes. Okay, yes. Lane. Yeah. So my journey brought me down to Peru and uh, Wachuma was my first experience. And uh, it was in a very sacred ceremonial setting, uh, very beautiful, very, and that's, you know, that's where I was called and that's how I began that aspect of my journey. What is what, what you, what, what that word you say? Wach Wachuma, what? yeah, yeah, it's San Pedro, uh, which is, is also uh, what it's called. San Pedro, it's a South American cactus. And uh, in the Andean culture, um they use san pedro ceremonially the the equivalent of the north american is peyote okay chris, they're different but they're similar okay i'm sorry chris now i don't i'm not aware that i dropped anything i might have had a gummy yesterday but i doubt if it's still in my system but what you're doing over there is uh kind of messing with my my head so quit jumping around um <laughs> look at the pretty colors oh wait that's the background okay i'm just saying, now i was being silly of course but before we continue in the group, you guys put inside the comments you that are out there watching. Uh, do you feel yes or no this that what we're talking about should be something people should be afraid of? Okay, because of things like what I just said. So keep going. Who wants to go next? I'll go. My uh, my experience was different. I uh, I did use hallucinogenics recreationally. Uh, I was called. To, uh, and I didn't know I was called to it at the time, obviously. I, uh, I hadn't progressed that far, but I was called to LSD at a young age. At 13, 14, we started experimenting um, and would weekly journey. Um, it was all very, it, it was not intentional. Um, you know, it was about who could catch the greatest tracers on a cigarette or, you know, have the best story to tell when they came back. Um, but I was never drawn uh, to anything other than that in cannabis. So I never was drawn to anything else. And then uh, wasn't comfortable exploring that uh, until uh, Lane exposed it to me again this past year. Um, and we did a very intentional uh, psilocybin journey in Colorado. Uh, I'm a veteran as well. Uh, my PTSD uh, stems from finding my brother dead, not from a veteran related thing. Um, and if I get emotional, it's cool. It's part of me. So I'm mm -hmm. glad if I do. Um, and so 
my journey took me there and that's what kind of kicked the door open. And then from intentional, um, and I spent three weeks in Peru, uh, with ayahuasca and then went to Cusco and spent time with San Pedro and it, it changed me. I mean, it fundamentally has reprogrammed who I am, what I am, um, uh, just to even be able to feel the emotion in me. Now the Marine Corps turned off my emotion. They wanted me to be a killer, even though I wasn't society told me that I needed to be this guy that I was supposed to be, um, this strong protector and that I wasn't allowed to show emotion. And I wasn't allowed to tear up when that shit just stirred up in me because I'm so passionate. And once I learned that that is my fucking superpower, that Mm. dialing into my emotion and feeling that flow through me not only allows me to feel powerful and to feel pain and hurt, but it allows me to feel joy, love and all those other things that I had been uh, missing this whole time. So yeah that's it in a nutshell thanks for sharing chris um and mine too i already admitted it It was uh you know we were running around going to raves and things like that back in the day and uh uh and i did it because i want i'll tell you i but still even though that's how it happened my intention was to uh i wanted to see if my my mind could be used like a piece of silly putty because back then the commercial was they take silly putty and put it on a comic strip and peel off the comic strip color. And there the picture was and you could stretch it and make it into what you wanted it to look like. And that's what I was desiring. So that was that was why I jumped that broom and made it over that threshold. Uh, today, it's a different story, a different uh, intention. But nonetheless, the bridge, I look at it all as a bridge to something that I have a birthright to. Because if there's a way for me to get there, then why wouldn't I want to go if I want to go? You see what I'm saying? Not saying everyone wants to travel. You know, it depends on where you want your passport stamped in your journey. You see what I'm saying? That's how I look at it. That's how I look at it. Um, I'm allowed to go to any country I want to. So um, Let's, Can so, we speak of uh, judgment real quick? Judgment? Uh, judgment, yeah. Judgment, so, st- judgment slash stigma? Yeah. Yeah. So just real quick, I think, uh, you know, the the quotes at the beginning of that video were from famous people, innovators, creators, all these kinds of things that we all respect. And the people that we respect, or at least to a certain degree, has something to say about it. And a lot of times when we bring up this subject, judgment automatically like becomes this very fervent energy mm-hmm. to like point that like, hey, this is bad. And so I think what we're doing here is being able to remove the stigma, soften up the conversation to allow, like, you know what, if there's thousands of veterans, there's thousands of people, famous people, creators, storytellers, innovators, and these are like good people that are having these experiences and scientific research is being conducted, anecdotal experiences are being shared. So it's like, okay, we have all this stuff. Now let's take a look from an unbiased and just hold off on judgment. Let's just assume that if all of these good people are having these amazing experiences, what could be behind it? What could be the thing Mm. that we could remove the judgment from to say, you know what, maybe that's things like wild and I can't handle it, or maybe it's something like that, but being able to remove the judgment, I think, uh, you know, is something that this conversation is absolutely doing. And I think that we're doing it more by, having all those, these different aspects of the world, research, anecdotal, healing, um, all these things. Oh, yeah. To that point, I want to jump in because I, like I I shared when I came on and everybody knows this part of my story, but I I shot heroin for six months. So I was a junkie, like I was doing drugs and I was trying to cover up that pain through the wrong, you know, methods. And so there was a time when I was younger, I was 18, 19, I did mushrooms once didn't really even feel anything was probably so closed down, you know, trying to protect myself that like, I wasn't even open to the experience. And then, and then I did a summer with ecstasy, which the main component in ecstasy is MDMA, which is used in clinical uh, settings to these days to, to help with so many healings. But I did a summer with ecstasy. And so I was using those, you know, things as drugs. And then fast forward, you know, 20 years, 
And when I sat with mushrooms again for the first time in a, in a ceremonial, intentional way, it completely changed my life forever. And it started me on this healing journey that I've been on and, I, and absolutely has changed me. So I think we have to look at it from these are tools. I believe it's, you know, I call it divine technology. These are, these are teacher plans that have been given to us, but they're tools. And like anything else, it's the intention behind it. Do you want to create healing and change? Do you want to find some insights? Do you want to have a relationship better with yourself, with others? Do you want to connect with God, spirit? Yes, you can do that. Or you can go out and party and do too much of something. So it's, it's all in how you use it. It's all in the intention. And for me, someone who used to shoot heroin to now someone who sits with shamans and does ayahuasca, it's, it's much different. It's night and day. So I am the perfect case study. And I'll be the first person to tell you that it's all in how you, how you use it. I agree. I agree. Now I want to say, uh, throw something in and then, um, then I'll, we're going to hit a couple comments. Um, two really powerful ones actually. But the thing that the reason I am very careful about it now, I've just been on one of those journeys and it was a mushroom thing. It was this summer. I flew all the way to, uh, to Utah for this and, um, it was interesting. It was interesting. However, I will say this. I've seen people who, and this, and you're right, Lane, about the judgy thing, and I'm trying not to be that way, but, you know, I'm like this. If people don't want, I mean, when they give you something to talk about, if they don't want to talk about it, they shouldn't do it. But I've seen people, there are people, just like in anything, uh, that, uh, mm, let's just say, I've seen people go into these journeys come out they should they went in before the training wheels were off i think you have to yeah. get my opinion is you have to grow and evolve to a certain place where you're using it and setting the right intention because the setting intention and intention is only half of it in my opinion uh that's the pulling back the drawing back of the bow to release the arrow and i would do it personally the reason i i chose the journey was so that I might be able to release some arrows that have been in my quill for a while. Some quills that have been in there, you know, that I want to get out there um, and to open myself up for what I need to receive so that I can catch some arrows right out, you know, um, more about my superpowers, that sort of thing. That's how I look at it. But I've seen people who come out and they want you to sit at their feet practically. You know, they should start talking in a different way, but things don't match. You know what I mean? You're like, wait a minute, you're the one. And I'll just say this. I saw this happen with the person. Let's say, I, I don't remember exactly what month it was, but it was like a four month difference. They went from that and sit at my feet and let me bless you, child, to finding themselves in a wooded area with a gun in their mouth and a noose around their neck. So I'm just, that put me off a little bit. You know, so I just want to ask this. Let's throw Brandon. this out. Yeah, about how people should go about this. What is what is is there a handbook? How do they know? Because some people are just because somebody else is doing it, they want to do it too. Don't you feel that the soil within your mind has to be ready? It has to be tilled, fertilized, if you will, to be ready to plant those types of seeds. Well, everybody has their own journey. And so part of what we're doing here is we're sharing, exposing different. I mean, I think if somebody's watching this and they're interested okay. in it, then that seed is already planted. So Wait. I think. What'd you say? I said, I, I think if you're if if this has already piqued your interest, if you're listening to this, then that seed's already been planted. That's what I found. I started seeing plant medicine showing up more and more in my daily life. And I had to start asking myself, why? Why are people that I know talking about this? Why are people that I know? And like Lane said, I, I really like that we always talk about these really impactful people, but my ripple doesn't have to be big. I don't have to be Steve Jobs to have gained some incredible insight from these medicines. It can just cause me to be a better person and impact the 50 people that I impact on a daily basis. But I don't, I don't like my journey was like you said, mine, mine was, it had progressed. And then I, I, I answered the call to the plant medicine, but 
to say that everyone's journey should be that way. I have great friends that are really spiritual and psilocybin, they had never smoked cannabis. They went straight to psilocybin and that's where their journey began. So I agree that if you, if it's on your radar, that you should definitely start doing the research and find people that you trust. And I, I think when you start putting that in the universe and you start, uh, you know, radiating at that frequency, you start vibrating at that frequency that the universe naturally pulls you, pulls people in um, that are also resonating at that same frequency. So it'll happen organically. I, I'm um, going to say this. I'm going to butt in on this one. Um, I have a little bit of issue with that. And I'm going to tell you why. Because if a person that's not their jam I don't think that their purpose in this world is going to be any less. You know, it's like if you want to take the freeway or the surface streets. But it's the destination that matters the most. Knowing why you're going and what you plan on doing once you get there. Now, if the mission of getting there uh, gets sidetracked or all of a sudden your GPS, your guided purpose system, reroutes you because of unforeseen circumstances, it may send you to a, a, a pit stop with a pit crew, like a lane who helps people get over a mountain that doesn't, their vehicle doesn't have the, the isn't ready for that terrain. You see what I'm saying? They didn't bring an off-road vehicle or they don't see theirs as one. They don't know how to make it change into what they need it to be. So I'm just saying, you know, it's, you know, when you said if somebody's already on it, they've already decided um, I don't know about that because, you know, there are a lot of people like myself, you know, uh, Jesse, you said, you know, you smoked uh, heroin for six years. Well, I smoked crack for 14. And so I saw people who, you know, I'm going to say this, who, you know, have we have that have an addictive personality who just want to fit in who this. But I really believe that people need to we have what we need to. St I mean, the journey, we didn't have this when we were babies. You know, when I made it through 22 homes in the foster system, I didn't need any any drug to get me through those towns. I had I had a, a, a Thomas guide already on my person. It showed me turn left here, stay put there, turn right up the road a bit. So what do you guys say about that, though? Because I don't want people to think that we're we're pushing uh, this experience or saying that something is lacking in a person who says it's not for me. Can I, can I respond just because I think I either misspoke or you misheard me. What I said was if, if, if this is piquing your interest, then likely you're already on that journey that you need to discover if this is for you. Absolutely. It's not for everyone. My wife has 25 years of sobriety. She will not touch a drug or a plant or anything. And that's her choice. That's her sovereignty. That's the beautiful thing that I've learned through all this. I have sovereignty and I make that decision. For me, I will tell you, it was paramount. It was paramount. I lived a horrible, horrible life. I, I, I wasn't a good person. I get I, it. But Chris, I'm going to say this. What you said this time that you did not say the first time. And um, I didn't misinterpret because you said back at the beginning. Uh, and we, well, now what you say, let's stick with what you just said, because that's the easiest thing to remember. Peaking. To me, peaking is the key word. Peaking your interest. Peaking means you've climbed up something. You're, yes. You've now, you've grown to where it's like, okay. To me, that's an informed decision. You've walked around it 360 degrees. Um, because I think that's important, not because you're going to OD or anything like that, but if it is going to provide some bridge, the bridge has, in order to go somewhere, it has to start somewhere. Absolutely. And I was gifted the opportunity of having Lane in my life. And so for me, I was gifted that. And I was informed enough to know that I should go through the research, find, you know, reliable people, make those connections. I've journeyed with Jesse uh, on, uh, journeys he's facilitated. Um, so I did go out and seek those people and I agree it's, it's absolutely paramount because like anything there, there are people that aren't there with the greatest of intentions. So mm -hmm. yes, you're absolutely correct. I agree. And you have to be with people that, you know, 
deserve to be seated in the front row seats of your journey. Don't so just for me, there's there's two points. Huh? So for me, there, so for me, there's two points. One, there's the individual ownership of your journey. That's that's most paramount. Mm -hmm. So you taking ownership of your journey and knowing within yourself to say this is this is my path. Breath work is my path. Uh, meditation is my path. Plant medicine is my path. Or this is not my path. This is not my path. This is not my path. So yeah. ownership for each individual is point one. Point number two. And this is where is one of my biggest um, efforts in life is sincerity to sincerely mm. know or to sincerely ask the questions of what's right for somebody's authentic journey mm. that differentiates the soul path and the egoic path. That's a whole other topic. But but the rooted behind it is I sincerely care about you and what is on your path, whether it's meditation or no meditation, plant medicine or no plant medicine. My sincere intention is, is to help you realize your authentic path. And so that, that simple intention is, is where I stand, you know, and that purity of sincerity is, is the level in which I think that some people become advocates of a, a particular modality. And mm -hmm. that's our, that's our right. Mm -hmm. That's our flavor of expression, which is, there's nothing wrong with that either. Right. But for me, you know, I know that there's there's a lot of different ways, a lot of different healing modalities, plant medicine or not, right. that are sincerely going to help you on your authentic path. And that's the key, too. That's another key. Authentic path. And so people, you know, it's like this. This is my point. That's why I was pushing a little bit um, to to get it all out there, because I want you to know that whatever is available for you and to you should be based on, um, you know, you have to have a plan. Plans are connected to our needs. If you need to lose 10 pounds and you really want it to happen, then you need to shop better, to cook better, to eat better foods, to lose the weight you want. But when you just say, I want to try that, and you don't have a plan, you're going into danger, what could be a dangerous situation based on a wish list. So know why you're going and know who should take you there. So because that's the point I wanted to make, Lane, people come to you and say, can you escort me from this place to what lives right beyond it? Because the truth is people want to get from they're looking for a way to get from point A to point B. Point A is where we find ourselves at any given moment. And point B is everything after that. So I want you to think about that um, and and find where do people go? Lane, where do people go? Where's a good place for someone to start the quest of, well, let me find, you know, I've been considering it. I want to do it in a great way so that I do it. So it, I, I ascend and I do all, I get all that I'm searching for. Talk about that for a second. Uh, so, uh, you know, I live by intentions, you know, Stephen Kuhn, my business partner, he's not here, but we talk about intentions all the time. And so for me, it's about setting a simple intention that I need to guide, that needs to guide my path will be attracted to me. And so that's a simple intention. And then as I move about in the world, I'll have the conversation. I'll be, you know, some somebody will say, hey, man, I think you need to talk to Lane or I think, hey, I think you need to talk to this guy because I think he's going to help you out. So because I set that intention, that yeah. was brought to me. So for me, it's about knowing exactly where I am in this moment. And asking myself, this is for everybody that's, that's watching, that's asking the question, where do I begin? First, set that intention mm -hmm. and then start looking around and welcoming the connection of the right person with a sincere and authentic care for you. Not mm -hmm. trying to push their journey, not trying to push their modality of healing, but that they have this sincere, sincere feeling of like, you know what, whatever it is that you need, I'm here to help and assist. And, yeah. and if you trust that, it will come. I promise you. It will come. Now, while I'm reading a couple comments, um, we're a little over, but that's okay. That's okay. Uh, we're going to wrap up here in about five minutes. So I want you guys, each of you, if you could, uh, to think about your one minute, no more than a minute and a half, uh, Jerry Springer moment, if you will, your final thought. And let's put it like this. If out of everything we've discussed here today and those things that we didn't get to, if there was one thing you would want someone who really 
is seeking direction on all things we've spoken here today. Uh, what would you want them to remember above all else from today's time together? So while you're thinking on that, I'll get to this. Jamie says plants, not synthetics, emphasis on the not, align with the human genome. We have receptors and transmitters in our body that can be ignited via plants. This triggers our body's physiological processes, compounds that are able to do that without inhibiting functions. For example, side effects is not a drug. Plants are not drugs. The synthetics and dyes provided to us are. Our DNA is not made of dyes and bioengineered material. It is made of amino acids and proteins, which are responsible for enzymes. Wow. Um, Jamie, uh, you you know a little something. Uh, Facebook user, you never gave me your name, so sorry. I don't mean to call you that, but I have no choice. Uh, Where did you go? A lot of comments. Woo. Okay, here we go. Uh, every time I did shrooms, LSD paper, gel tabs, dots, etc., was for recreation. But a few times, I did feel connected to a higher consciousness on a few occasions. Did anyone else experience permagran, where you're tripping and you smile for hours and hours, and eventually your face smile muscles hurt? Yes, that happened to me in Boston. It was a, a Cape, actually a Cape Cod uh, wedding weekend, and whoa! Uh, let's just say we crawled about a half a mile down the road and, and looking under the... Every time we went forward, the ground turned into glass a glass ocean. So we were like, hey, that mermaid down there. Did you see that? There was a shipwreck back there. I mean, and it was every time somebody suggested something, we all saw it. It was incredible. Um, that was way back in the day. So we're going to uh, wrap up here. You guys, uh, before uh, we get, let the guys get started, I just want to thank you. I appreciate you. I thought this would be a great idea because in the secret chambers of my mind, in my spirit, I do have questions that... You know, I'm not going to trust just any old book, any old thing I can Google to lead me like I was led to uh, Utah this summer. Uh, I wanted to pull into people that I trust to tell you whatever is on their spirit, on their heart. And that's exactly what happened. So I suggest you either uh, line up with some of these guys. Uh, I'm going to put their, uh, their links up as they give you their final thoughts. And just know that these are good, safe, reliable resources. And that's what matters first. So who, let's see, let's start with Chris. You came in last. We'll let you go first. Yeah, uh, yeah I think for me, the, the plant medicine is like, like Lane said, it's another tool in my toolbox um, with each plant providing a different insight or a different intention. Mm -hmm. um, it's not something I always use. Um, I use a lot of other modalities. Um, and I think but I think there's something out there for everyone. I think there's something out there for everyone that they can find, um, that they can settle themselves, center themselves, um, and really just continue to spread the love and the light. Cause I believe that that's ultimately what we're here to do. And I 100% appreciate the time. I believe that everyone's a teacher. So thank you so much uh, for taking the time to have me. And uh, I love all of you guys. Thank you so much for providing a, a safe container to discuss. Thank you, Chris, and thank you for coming, uh, you know, uh, um, when you did. Uh, you were meant to be here, clearly. So uh, Exactly what the moment called for. Exactly, and we'll have to have another one of these uh, powwows and get you in from the very beginnings. But thank you so much. Um, if you want to drop uh, your connector where people that may want to continue the dialogue with you into the private chat, I'll get it um, out where they can get to it. So next, we're going to go to uh, Ez. Aloha, beautiful people. So, you know, I've been, been listening and um, really, when I get, when we're in these spaces, I like to try to listen with my heart as well and not lose reason. So I think we, we touched on a lot of really deep things that we could certainly go, you know, further into. With this medicine, which I, I do serve, but I don't push on people. I like to say that you are the medicine. Like this is just another, all of these things out here are just another aspect of self. And so how do you interact with that and receive something? It's not going into that experience and expecting the, the experience will change some things, but what do you do afterwards? So you spoke to plans. I think even to go further, having a strategy, like the plan can fail, but a strategy can keep you moving and adaptable. And so, you know, what is your plan for integrating? How much information are you willing to go? Ownership, 
that Lane spoke to, I think is really important. You know, this is an experience that's projecting from you. All of this is you. And so how do you account for that within yourself? And how do you have the dialogue reckoning? And then what are you intending to take? So intention, ownership, strategy, integration, how do you digest it? And then just keep in mind that, you know, ask yourself, when does the journey really end? When will your integration really end? You know, we, we set these markers, but I don't believe those markers, they may not really exist. And so, you know, question that and have patience with yourself along the journey, because more things tend to unfold that may be related to the first thing that you thought was a last thing, but it's just a thing in between all things. <laughs> that makes sense? Yeah. So, so a lot of things, a lot of things. And you can get a hold of me at Epic underscore Ezria on Instagram. And I just, you know, wish you all the best. It's been really beautiful, really beautiful energies and intention here. So thank you for letting me be a part of it. And thank you. Honoring you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Hope to see you back again. Um, Absolutely. Oh, names on the screen. We know what that means. How you doing? Thank how you doing? Yeah. How you all doing? Right. Yeah. All right. No, so, uh, yeah. Thank you all for, uh, you know, holding a beautiful container. And for anybody that's watching this, whether it's live or later, you know, soak in whatever you need, you know, and allow it to help you on your journey. So the last thing that I want to share is basically um, owning your approach in life. And this has to do with storytelling. But uh, what I mean by owning your approach is that every step you take, the more that you own that step, the easier it is for you to reclaim your power you know, have the more joy, have the more success, have the more whatever it is that you're seeking for this particular step. And how you take that step or your approach is how you are writing your own story. So if we're talking about concretely, you know, someone that's asking, like, what, what's my next step? Well, you you have the power to own that step. So are you going to go off on the deep end? Are you going to try something really extreme because, you know, this is going to jolt your system? Are you somebody that's like, you know what, I'm just going to dip my toe in and I'm going to I'm going to feel it out. I'm going to research. I'm going to talk to a whole bunch of people. And then whenever I feel ready, I'm going to take the smallest step again. That's all different. Everybody has their own approach and consciously owning your approach is how we can move forward and write a beautiful story. Because, you know, for me, you know, getting getting in the dirt and muddy early on in life and, try, and challenging, challenging times. But overcoming that, that's my story. You know, everybody has their own story. But it was only until I, I started owning my approach to where things got really fun and uh, mm. sprinkling a little bit of surprise. <laughs> mm. Beautiful, unexpected gifts. Love it. Thank you so much, uh, Lane, as always. Uh, a real pleasure and an honor. Uh, we've we've done quite a few things together, and I hope we continue. So thank you so much. My best to Stephen when you see him, and happy holidays. Uh, finally, uh, Jesse T, uh, you helped. Uh, this was, uh, you know, pretty much your idea. So uh, there you go. Take us out. First thing, brothers, I love each and every one of you, and uh, you've you've all had an impact on me and helped helped write yourselves into my story, and vice versa. And I'm very thankful for each one of you and this beautiful conversation and. You know, I'm looking forward to the next one. Um, and then for me, what I can impart and leave is is just love. And, you know, love really is the answer to everything. Love, loving yourself. Uh, and starting there, there's a book I want to share. Just to, just talk about it in two seconds. It's called Love Yourself Like Your Life Depends On It. And it's an audio book as well as, you know, a tangible book. And the audio book's about four hours long. So it's really fast, it's really quick. But it's one of the most important things you can ever listen to. And so in this process, we've talked about, all these different modalities and all these different things from ice baths to meditation, to sweat lodges, to plant medicines and everything in between. But all those things are really just a reflection of self-love and, and, and increasing that love for yourself. And, and that cliche of put your oxygen mask on first before, you know, someone else in an airplane, this is what self-love is. You have to love yourself and show up for yourself before you can pour into somebody else. And so if I can impart one thing, it's love yourself like your life depends on it. The book is by Kamal Ravikant. It's life-changing, easy read. Um, and this, this, this one insight of loving yourself, like your life depends on it will bleed into everything else that you do. Mm, awesome. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And I'll go last and say this. Um, I'm really grateful. I love illuminated conversations. Uh, you know, uh, the light is within us. We are the light. 
don't buy into the hogwash uh, that tells us that the light is at the end of the tunnel. The light is at the end of the tunnel after your quest of digging the tunnel is complete. Uh, mm. Don't look for anyone to bring the light for you to dig through anything in your journey. Google miner and you'll see a photo of a real miner. And when they go into any situation, their light is right here because wherever they are, the light is them and they are the light. Remember that if there is light at the end of the tunnel, you're in the wrong tunnel. Go in. There is no such thing as darkness. It is all relative. And when we have illuminated conversations like this, even if we believe we're in the dark, everyone here will bring a light and everyone around you will expect one from you. So get out there and look for that one E and that one R. Because we are who we are, the only creature that speaks, it means that we are already great. Don't write your journey's narrative ever again using all 26 letters. Just get up every day. And follow the quest, looking for that one E and that one R. Take bright to brighter, strong to stronger, great to greater, bold to bolder, bolder, bolder. And if you're like me from the hood, take good to gooder. Yes, we will. And you guys, yeah, man. find it wherever you need to. Just find it. And before we get out of here, I want to encourage all of you. It is the holiday season, but every day should be that season. AmazonSmile.com, a lot of you may not know this, but if you do any of your shopping all year long, if you go to AmazonSmile.com, you can choose your nonprofit. Everything you ever buy from that moment forward, unless you change it, a piece of the sale will go mm. to your charity of choice. Yeah. It's a great way to give without it coming directly out of your pocket because you were going to buy that thing anyway. So get over, check it out. I do it. And I and I just love to share that. Share the good news, AmazonSmile.com. And for um, my last thing, as we get out of here, you guys have the best holiday season. Thank you so much for bringing this in. I believe we've poured into each other as we should as a collective. And for you out there, keep the search going, please. We need each other now more than ever before. I believe that we as a collective, those of us who have been chosen and have chosen in return, are writing history that the world will grow through, heal from, and speak of for thousands of years. Write your story, one syllable at a time. I'll see you guys tomorrow where my guest will be. Uh, I had it here. Where is she? Where is she? Where? Oh, here she is. Aisha Goodall. She's a fitness guru out of L.A. doing big, big things in a different way. Tune in tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Central, and we'll do it all over again. I'll meet you right out front for our next installment of Bathrobe Moments. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. God bless you. Show you. I'll